Glad we have somebody who knows uh, the grammar. And I, I'm really more interested in a socialist view of time. To each according to his needs. <laughs> From each according to his abilities. From each according well, that sounds like some to you. Everybody knows that there are certain words and phrases that persons in business can own for limited commercial purposes. These are popularly known as trademarks, which I call the syndicatical term, that for convenience I'll sometimes use throughout this talk. Though legally the term trademark refers only to names that businesses apply to goods or products. For example, Alpha Seltzer, Band-Aid, Barbie doll, Beanie Baby, Coke, Crisco, Kleenex, Scotch tape, Tinker Toy, Trojan, uh, Velcro, and Windows. Um, it, when trade names are used to refer to services, including advertising slogans in the names of companies themselves, uh, they're legally called service marks. Uh, and the example there is Apple, Federal Express, FedEx, McDonald's, Microsoft, and Maxwell House is famous good to the last drop. Most trademarks have so little interest to dictionary makers that they do not appear in standard dictionaries, though most of those that I've mentioned above do. Socially and economically, however, trademarks are of great importance. Billions of dollars are spent each year in promoting uh, marks, uh, establishing positive connections in the public mind between brand names on the one hand and products and services on the other. Without trademarks to rely on, marketing would be a very dicey business for both the consumer and the marketer. Imagine what the world would be like if all grocery stores were simply labeled grocery store. We rely on Albertsons being one kind of supermarket and Publix uh, on another, at least in Orlando. For the better part of the past decade, I've become increasingly interested in train names, um, in part because hundreds of millions of human work hours each year are spent in litigation uh, about uh, uh, brand names, litigation that often seeks to answer what are essentially linguistic questions. Too often, however, courts rely upon linguistically naive reasoning and presuppositions in answering these questions, and I also believe uh, by the same token linguists uh, who are called upon uh, to give linguistic opinions in such case, as we often are, often rely upon naive uh, presuppositions about what it is that the courts are really asking. So uh, part of what I've been trying to do in a series of papers is to try to bring these two notions, uh, these two kind of views somewhat closer together. Occasionally trademarks um, at issue in a court case are southernisms, uh, and issues of uh, southern and regional variation are themselves important. Today I want to talk about uh, uh, two such. Um, the first is the case of a small candy manufacturer in Beaufort, South Carolina, who offers for sale uh, on the internet such, uh, and I think also it's south of the borders of South Carolina if you've ever been there, uh, such novelty candy items as chalk roaches, uh, which you'll see on the uh, on the slide and also on the handout. These are chocolate-covered almonds in the shape of cockroaches. They they may, per may be purchased either plain or impaled upon a stick. <laughs> At one time, the same manufacturer offered for sale something called roadkill chocolates in the shape of possum, uh, squirrels, and various other dead creatures that you might see typically lying along uh, public highway in the south. Apparently, however, this line has been discontinued. <laughs> Uh, at any rate, uh, there's no mention of such treats for sale on the chocroach.com uh, website, which is where I found this. Buzzards and vultures. <clears throat> Buzzards and vultures. Uh, chocroaches is arguably not a regionalism, even though the term was apparently created in the South, since A, the product is being marketed nationally, and since etymologically the term is clearly a blend of two non-regionalisms, chocolate and roaches. Uh, the Palmetto Bug, however, um, the website, uh, suggest is a regional synonym of southernism of sort for cockroach. Um, nor is chockroaches an issue in any litigation I know of. Now, however, the presence of the tiny R uh, or just before the S in chockroaches within a circle after the name, which indicates that the term has been properly registered with the Federal Office of Patents and Trademarks, a move that gives some added legal status uh, to it as a proprietary term. What is an issue in litigation, um, or rather was an issue for the case settled somewhat mysteriously out of court, is a tiny phrase in the bottom left-hand corner of item uh, number one with the red, by the red arrow on the handout, kiss my grits, R. 
uh, which is the registered service mark name of the company that manufactures chocolates. To the best of my knowledge, this phase is a faux southernism, one that is no doubt associated in the American mind with the American South, but one that was apparently created as a line used repeatedly uh, by a character supposed southern origin in the 19, uh, I think her name was Flo, in the 1980s television series Alice. The association of the word grits, a regional food popular in the South, reifies the regional status of Kiss My Grits. And it's this status, this quasi status, this fame of Kiss My Grits as a southernism, whether it is or not, um, that, uh, that is of some importance here, I think. If you're thinking that the owner of the service, um, uh, 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 I'm sorry, if you're thinking of the owner, if the owner of the series Alice sued the manufacturer of chalk roaches for trademark infringement or copyright violation, you're wrong. Uh, apparently, the owners of Alice, the series, could not or did not attempt to register the phrase Kiss My Grits as a service mark um, uh, or to copyright it. I'm not sure if that would even be possible. That's not my area of expertise. Uh, and the kind of use that the candy company made of the phrase apparently does not violate copyright laws. Uh, rather, when the Chockroaches folks attempted to register their service mark Kiss My Grits, they were blocked in their initial attempts by the Hershey Candy Company, uh, which has registered um, their service mark, uh, Kiss and Kisses, as applied to candy. And there's a versus Hershey's uh, uh, Kiss. They don't actually put the little R on there, but um, I guess they think they're so famous they don't have to. Um, whether or not Hershey should have a legal ownership of the term Kiss and Kisses as applied to candy, which I tend to think is a dubious claim in my opinion, but we don't have time to go into why. Um, it has a lot to do with the notion of genericness that I will develop uh, uh, later on. Um, there has been a lot of litigation about that, uh, uh, by the way. Um, rather, the issue here is likelihood of confusion between the term Hershey's Kisses uh, on the one hand and the Kiss My Grits candy company on the other. And um, I suspect this is why it was settled uh, out of court. It seems to me that the likelihood of confusion is relatively small. Legally, it may be possible to use one trademark term, KISS, as a unit in a larger trademark if the inclusion will not create confusion in the minds of likely consumers. So that was the issue here. Thus, regardless of whether or not Hershey has uh, protectable trademarks in KISS and KISSES, the KISS My Grits owners nonetheless had a right to register and use KISS My Grits if there is no practical danger that potential purchasers would assume that Hershey was a manufacturer of chocolates or any other Kiss My Grits product. <clears throat> um, if you look at uh, the list of products that Hershey has, and I don't know why you can see those, uh, this is on their primary webpage. These are the kinds of things that they, uh, that they sell. And there's nothing here really that seems to uh, suggest uh, southernism. Uh, Hershey's has rarely, if ever, applied uh, to candy companies uh, to their candy, um, appeal to their candy consumers using southern motifs. Uh, Kiss My Grits does, on the other hand. Uh, Kiss My Grits owners likely do relatively little, little advertising, uh, but as uh, the uh, uh, slide indicates, this, uh, the earlier slide indicates with the discussion of uh, Palmetto Bugs and, uh, and Charleston, uh, they're clearly appealing to the southern nature uh, of, their, uh, of their company. So it's to summarize some of that part, um, it, there are a number of different reasons why uh, one might well argue that Kiss My Grits Candy Company and Hershey's Kisses are not going to really mislead uh, people as to uh, as to origin. But I think that the putative uh, southernness of the phrase Kiss My Grits and the fact that Hershey's didn't do anything with uh, with southernism at all is a major part of uh, 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 is an important argument. 